here we go. So if you haven't practiced with me before, I'm Susie Schock and I'm just so pleased to have you. Um, so let's find a nice comfortable cross-legged seat. Um, it could be seated or again if you feel more comfortable just laying on your back, that's another option and it's just perfect. So find however you're most comfortable. I want to take just a moment to get us really settled in our body and grounded um, because I feel like the grounded being is the one that can manifest joy and manifest anything that you are really desiring in this moment. Um, and I feel like it would be nice to just do a little bit of releasing. It's been quite a year for everyone. So um, get comfortable. Use the props that, that are suitable for you. And just gently ease your eyelids closed, um, gazing down at the floor and then let the eyelids follow. Ah, and then just take a moment to play witness to how you're feeling right now. What's going on in your mind, in your body, um, and can you just slow your breath down a little bit? Long, even breaths in through the nose. Pausing at the top of your beautiful inhale. And just a really slow, passive exhale out. And sipping the air in very slowly again. Filling the lungs, just playing witness to that expansion. Pausing at the top of the inhale. And a very slow, again, passive exhale out. And just continue to find that rhythm. And if it feels appropriate, just bringing your left hand over your heart. And right hand over the left. What I talk about oftentimes in my healing room is in order to find your joy and your gratitude, you really have to surrender all the other stuff and all the other baggage that you've been dragging along. Um, so throughout this practice, how I know, the best way I know to surrender and release is through those gorgeous exhales. So don't be afraid to hold a posture longer. Don't be afraid to just like ugh, dump it out through the breath. But as we're sitting here in silence for just a couple more minutes, um, I really would like to honor everyone's journey over the last year. Um, and as you saw in the description, I really want to honor the frontline workers, our healthcare workers, people that have put themselves out there. Um, and many of you have joined us today. Um, so I want to create a circle of light around everybody who needs that extra care and that extra love today. So along with your breath, I just want you to focus um, your intention on the people who need it right now and just send them loving thoughts, encouragement, gratitude. And we can start with the healthcare workers and then I would just love to expand on everyone else in your circle, family and friends. Just breathing in gratitude for the lessons that we've learned this last year. And also gratitude that a lot of these things aren't permanent. We've grown a lot as a country and as, you know, worldwide. Um, so through our challenges, I think we've all learned quite a bit as well.
There's a phrase that I used to share with my girls when they were little, and I used to call them or tell them that they are ministering angels um, to their sisters. A ministering angel, my sister shall be. And I want to, um, I thought of that in terms of our healthcare workers, both men and women. You are ministering angels to all of us right now, and we are so grateful for you. One more thing before we move into our practice. I would love to do three rolling ohms. I know you're probably sitting in your living room with other people around, um, but there's nothing better getting grounded than our um, the ohm sound. So three rolling ohms. I can't hear any of you, but I can feel your vibrations. So let's exhale all the air from the lungs. Filling the lungs deeply, deep inhale, inhale, inhale. Oh. Two more. Keeping eyes closed, bringing hands onto your knees. So if you're lying on your back, come to a seated position, cross-legged position. And just begin to circle the torso around. So on the exhale, the belly's coming down towards the thighs. And on the inhale, you're circling around, stacking the spine again. And really start to get that movement and breath. Really deep exhales, stacking the spine, fill the lungs. Take it as slow or as fast as you need to. Sometimes it feels better to have a swifter breath and a more emphatic breath. So if that's what you need right now, this is all about listening to your body. And while we're doing these beautiful circles, I want to add on to our gratitude to all the teachers that are taking in our children through all of this and managing school through a pandemic and all of the beautiful parents that are supporting them. Everybody is showing up the best that they can right now. All right. One more circle in that direction, and then let's just reverse. Again, a nice glorious exhale when you're bringing belly down to the thighs, and maybe your movements start to pick up a little bit. Maybe they're staying slow and steady. But eyes are closed so you can feel into what your body's communicating right now. Let's do a couple more circles. And then sitting up nice and tall, inhaling arms up and overhead. Exhale, right hand comes down to the mat, left hand reaches over, side body stretch. Pause and hold, breathe into that. Releasing congestion through the hip and low back and side body. Inhale back to the center and then exhale, side body bend to the other side. Keeping the torso nice and open, chest and heart open. Good. Inhaling back to the center. Exhale, take a twist to the right. So left hand goes to the right knee, belly comes through, shoulders. And then the chin is stretching towards the back of the room.
a very slow, deep inhale as you come back to the center, switching that twist, right hand to the left knee, belly comes through, shoulders, fingertips of the left hand come right along the base of the spine. Good, inhale back to the center and then just kind of crawl into your child's pose. Taking knees to the outside edges of the mat, the big toes to touch. A lot of times I'll start on my forearms and I just kind of rock myself side to side. This kind of helps open up the inner thighs and my hips a little bit more and then I slowly crawl my fingertips out. Deep breath in and then settle in. So throughout class, I would love for you to tap into your body wisdom. And if it helps, I'll give the best cues I can verbally so you can take most of the class with eyes closed. But tap into what your body's communicating to you right now. Let's take two more breaths, child's pose. Fill the lungs. Empty the lungs, and we're shifting into ujjayi breath. In through the nose, out through the nose. Perfect. Now let's slowly come into a tabletop and stretch right into that cat spine. And then shift into cow pose. Let the tailbone lead. So tip the tailbone to the mat. Lumbar follows, thoracic spine, chin to chest. Tailbone tips up, belly comes through, chest, heart, chin to the sky. Really slow and even. And then we're going to move into a little more emphatic breathing. Let's do two more cat and cows, really slow. Inhale into your cow. And then a swift exhale. Inhale, cow. Exhale, cat. Inhale. Three more. Two. And one. Tabletop pose. Left hand reaches high to the sky, circling it around. Big arm circles in one direction. And then reverse. Good. One more time around and then reach it high to the sky. Really broad, even breath as the heart space opens. And on the exhale, sweep the hand through, thread the needle, shoulder rests, side of the head rests. Feel free if you want to extend the leg. Maybe the top hand reaches up and overhead. Maybe you take a half bind. Maybe you stay as you are. Just let everything let down. All the tension, all the chaos. And just be in the moment, be in the moment with your body right now. One more breath and then we'll release. Good, ground. The right hand, lift the left hand high to the sky, circle it around, and then release it back down to the earth. Setting up for the other side. So left hand plants, right hand high, circle the arm around as fast or as slow as you need to. Good, and then reverse. Nice. One more time, reach it high, and again, as broad of an inhale as you can get, open and expand. Release all the tension through the chest, and then sweep it through, thread the needle. Let the shoulder rest, side of the head rest. I like to extend my leg. Top hand overhead, or maybe a half bind, and close the eyes again, just feel into it. Let the tension release off the neck and the shoulders. And 
Allow your spine to reset a little bit. One more breath. And then slowly unravel. Grounding the left hand, coming back into extending that right arm high. Go ahead and then lower it down to the mat. From here, let's just step out into our high plank. You could stay in a modified plank on your knees. Go ahead, take a deep breath and then just paddle the heels out from side to side. And as you're doing that, just slowly lift the hips high until you're pedaling into a downward facing dog. And you can walk the feet out, you can walk them back in, you can shift your hips side to side. I'm hearing some popping in my body. <laughs> Come into child's pose whenever you need to. I could hold downward facing dog all day long. It just feels so good to me. But others, child's pose is what you need. Take all of the pressure off of yourself of how things should be through your practice and just enjoy how they are. Good. When you're ready, slowly lifting right leg high. I like to stay with hips squared to begin with for just a minute. It's a pretty intense stretch through the calf. So maybe bend the knee a little bit and then straighten the leg and bend the knee and just find the best placement for that leg. And if you would like to slowly open the hip and then bend the knee, the lifted leg, maybe circle the knee around. Right now, in this moment, all is well. Good, slowly square it off. Bringing knee to nose. Slowly finding your low lunge. Dropping down to the back knee. Use the blocks if you'd like. Or sweep the arms up and overhead. If hands are up and overhead, take a nice steeple grip. And then bending at the elbows, lifting elbows towards the sky, opening up the heart space. If that's not comfortable for you, just bring your hands to the low back, open up the chest. Breathing in. Breathing out. Good. One more beautiful full breath in. And then gently releasing fingertips down to the mat. Take another inhale. And exhale, pull back, Ardha Hanumanasana, half splits. Keep the knee bent as much as you need to. What I would love to see is the belly connected to the thigh. So that means that the knee may need to be bent for you. And for me, I just move forward and back a little bit because this is a pretty deep stretch in the beginning of class. And I'm just moving with my breath. Telling my hamstring, good morning, and giving it a little time to give me feedback. Good, so right now, toes are flexed towards my nose. Now let's slowly point the toes so they're moving down towards the mat. Good, and then flex the foot and bring it back towards the nose. And toes point. So we're just doing a little bit of nerve flossing right here. This is really great if your hips are tight or if you have any sort of Sciatic nerve pain. Good. A couple more times pointing and flexing. Nice. All right, let's shift it forward. Walk the foot out so you're in a runner's lunge, just bringing hands to the inside of the thigh. Just rock it out a little bit. We don't have to go really deep. You don't have to go down to the forearms. But just allow your hip to wake up a little bit more. If you roll onto the outside of the knee, make sure, or outside of the foot, make sure the knee follows. A couple more breaths. Nice. Ground the hands again. Curl the back toes under, front foot meets the back. You're in high plank. Paddle the feet out. 
This time, you can certainly lift the hips and move into downward facing dog, or you can shift forward, take a chaturanga, and come all the way down for cobra, upward facing dog. I like to hold my upward facing dog just a little bit, but you've got to make sure you've got the lower abdominals engaged very nicely. That mula banda, that root lock, pulling in and up. Good, and let's all lift into downward facing dog. Taking it really slow, breathing in. Good exhale when you get to your down dog. Bend the knees as much as you need to in the down dog. If your hamstrings are tight, I'd rather see bent knees and a straight back than a rounded spine and straight legs. All right, in your own time, left leg lifts high. Pause and hold. Pretty intense stretch again on that calf muscle. Feels good though. Staying as you are, or maybe lifting a little bit higher, opening the hip, bend the knee, knee to the sky. Heel to the sitting bone, circle it around. I know we're going slow today, but don't be fooled for a minute that you're not building muscle as you're doing this. You're just really filling the body, fueling it with that great oxygen that it needs by moving a little bit slower and deeper breaths. All right, let's square the hips up. Knee comes to the nose. And then finding your low lunge, dropping down to the bottom knee. Same thing here. You can put your hands on blocks. You can sweep them up and overhead. Steeple grip if you like. Little chest heart opener. Or bringing the hands down to the low lumbar. And just give that some support. However you're doing it, think of your glutes are firming up and you're lifting up from that mula banda, that root lock. Belly's firm and so everything is just beautifully supported. A couple more breaths. Listen to your body. Go ahead, fingertips release down to the mat. Take an inhale. Exhale, pull the hips back, toes follow. Knees can be bent or straight. And like I said, I just move my hips back and forth a little bit, bending the knees, straightening a little more. I'm not forcing anything. I'm just allowing my body to communicate back what it's ready for in this moment. Some days it's prepared for a lot more than others. Good. All right. Toes are flexed. Let's slowly point the toes towards the mat. You'll get a really awesome stretch over the top of the ankle. Flex the foot again. And then point. And see if you can kind of just unravel your foot a little bit. So you're leading with the ball of the foot, the toes follow. You're leading with the top of the foot, toes follow. Good, a couple more. It's a beautiful thing. Shift the weight forward, walk the foot up and out for runner's lunge. Hands come to the inside of the thigh. Find your runner's lunge in this moment. I like to roll onto the outside edge of my knee, or of my foot, I keep saying my knee, but again, remember the knee has to follow. Two more breaths. Good, ground the foot, ground the hands. Toes curl under in the back leg, front foot meets the back, pause and hold, pedal the knees out a little bit. Press through the heels. Little strengthening, a little firing up of the core muscles, belly and spine. And again, lift your hips high if you prefer going into down dog, or shift the weight forward and slowly lower, chaturanga. You can take cobra or upward facing dog. Again, I like to pause and hold just for a moment in the beginning of class and let the front body open a little bit. 
in your own time, moving into downward facing dog. Get an open mouth exhale if you need to release some heat. Let's walk the feet out to the outside edges of the mat and shorten your down dog a little bit, right? We're just going to take a little twist here. So take a full inhale, and on the exhale, the left hand's going to come to the outside of the thigh, the calf, or the ankle. Once you find that connection, bringing the belly through, shoulders, gazing up towards your armpit. Coming back to the center, ground the hand. Take an inhale and an exhale with the other hand. Right hand comes to the left hamstring, thigh, or calf. All is well. Back to the center. Walking the hands back out. Walking the feet back in. Breathing in. Let's bend the knees, belly to thighs, rolling up into all ten toes. Deep stretch. Walk yourself to the top of the mat. I like feet hip distance or wider. Take a nice halfway lift. And again, to begin with, just be so kind. Bend the knees, bring the belly to the thighs. Start there and then just let the torso melt. Let the crown of the head melt down towards the mat and interlace hands in front of you or maybe you want to take a chest expansion. Just find a really juicy ragdoll pose. Mm. Let all your thoughts just dump out of the crown of your head. Let any stress that you've been holding on to just slowly release. Feel your feet rooted down and grounded to the earth. Toes are spread out evenly. Now just let the hands hang heavy, literally like a rag doll. Long breath in. Slow, even breath out. Let's come to a halfway lift, even with knees bent. And then slowly reverse your swan by reaching all the way up into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Bring the hands to the heart center, Samastitihi. Eyes are closed. All right, let's build from the bottom up. Feel grounded through the feet. Toes are spread out evenly. Feel the earth below the feet. Drawing that beautiful life force up through the legs, through the thighs. Kneecaps are slowly drawing up. Glutes are slowly firming and building. Now think of pulling up through the pelvic floor, lifting the Mula Bandha, connecting to the Uddiyana Bandha. All of that rising of energy moves into the heart space. Good. Broaden the chest. And set your intention for the remainder of the year. What is it that you desire? Breathe that in and then exhale out all of the other congestion. And do that three times. Breathe in your intention. Breathe it out. One more time. We promise you all is well. Say Namaskar A, Sun Salutation A. Inhale, arms up and overhead. Long exhale, open baby back bend. Inhale, palms to touch. Exhale, hands come through the heart, forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift, long spine. Slow, even exhale as you take Chaturanga Dandasana. Again, you can come to knees, you can come into Cobra, or upward facing dog. Hips come high, downward facing dog. Get grounded again. Feel stable. Each and every single breath that you're taking is spirit moving through the body. Every single breath regenerates the body and every single cell in it. It regenerates it with divine light, divine love. Let's roll up onto ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs. 
Slowly bring yourself to the top of the mat. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, surrender into that fold. Ground your feet, get stable, sweep it all the way into Tadasana Mountain Pose. Opening up heart center, baby, back bend, honor your intention. Inhale, palms to touch. Exhale, bring it all the way through your body, reground down to the earth. Forward fold. Inhale, halfway lift. Exhale, move through your vinyasa. Make every movement with intention. Move your thought out of the way and just move with intention. What does your body need in this moment? Does this feel good? One more breath. And let's slowly come to the top of the mat. Inhale halfway. Exhale again, surrender into your fold. Get grounded, sweep it high into Tadasana Mountain Pose, steeple grip. And on the exhale, take a nice side body bend. Good, inhaling back to the center. Exhale, side body bend. Inhale, back to the center. Lifting up nice and tall, take a little baby back bend. And back to the center. Hands come through the heart, forward fold. Open halfway. Ground the hands, chaturanga. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhaling, downward facing dog. Breathe in. Breathe out. Rolling on the ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway. And exhale, fold. Weight in the heels, lift up into chair pose, mukatasana. Hands come to heart center, pause and just breathe. Think of the glutes firing up, again lifting up through the mula bandha, engaging that core, the mula bandha, uddiyana bandha, heart space opens. Think of the energy rising from the feet through the legs, up through the pelvis, into the heart center and just bursting out through the heart. Little pulses up and down. Little pulses. Just letting your body know you are alive and well. Pulsing four and three and two. Inhale, arms up and overhead. A couple emphatic exhales. Exhale out. Inhale, arms up. Exhale out. One more. Inhale. Exhale. Inhale, slow it down. Hands to the heart, forward fold. Long, even breath, halfway lift. Ground the hands, be kind, come to your knees if that feels better. Slowly lowering into your chaturanga. Finding up dog or cobra. Easing into downward facing dog. Grounding breath, breathe in. Breathing out, sir namaskar B. Inhale, right leg high. Exhale, finding warrior one feet. Inhale as you sweep it all the way up, pause and hold. Drawing the right hip back, left hip forward. Hands come to heart center, close the eyes. Feel grounded, feel stable. Feel powerful in your warrior one, inhale. Exhale, hands plant to the mat, front foot meets the back, chaturanga. Inhale, up dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Grounding breath in through the nose. Out through the nose. Inhale, left leg. Exhale, warrior one feet. Feel grounded, sweep it all the way up. Pause and hold, close the eyes. Feel into your body again. Feel its strength. Inhale. Exhale, ground it back down, front foot meets the back. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog, breathe in. Breathe it out. Good, inhale, prepare to move. Exhale, top of the mat. Inhale, halfway. 
Exhale, fold forward. Inhale, chair pose, Utkatasana. Exhale, hands to the heart center. Weight in the heels, fire in the glutes. Feet are grounded, now lift the energy up through the feet, through the legs, through the pelvis, into the heart again. Little pulsing. Little pulsing. You are strong and you are powerful. Chair pose is also called thunderbolt. Pulsing four, three, two, one. Inhale, arms up. Open mouth, exhale out. Inhale, exhale. One more. Slow it down, arms up. Hands to the heart, forward fold. Good, inhale halfway. Exhale, ground the hands, step back, fold through your vinyasa. Inhale, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Inhaling right leg high. Knee comes to the nose this time, pause and hold. Carve out the belly, finding warrior one again. Inhale, sweep the arms up and overhead. Close the eyes, feel grounded. Now reaching fingertips forward, spine is long. Sweep the hands behind you, interlace. Steeple grip. You can use that strap or back rope tie and we're slowly, slowly gonna breathe down into humble warrior. Let your whole body surrender into this. This posture to me is so much like life, right? There's some challenge to it. There's some physical challenge to it. And there's some beautiful surrender that's involved in it as well. So it's finding both. You can feel challenged and you can also surrender whatever that is. Let's come to a halfway lift. All right, let's launch off onto the right foot. Take your time. Right, toes are touching the mat, release the hands. So you've got airplane arms. And in your own timing, as you're feeling stable, lifting the leg. Now, I don't care if the leg is lifted two inches. I don't care if the toes are touching or if your whole body is parallel with the mat. Find what works for you right now. Inhaling into airplane. Exhale, arms up and overhead, warrior three. Inhaling back into airplane. Exhale, warrior three. Inhale, airplane. Exhale, warrior three. Pause and breathe, four, three, two. Step it back into low lunge, or excuse me, crescent lunge on one. Good, let's lift the leg, give it a break. Arms come down to your side, and then slowly back into crescent. Good, exhale, lift. Good, and lower. Two more. Lift it up, and lower it back down. One more time. Lift it up, and lower. Inhale, open baby back bend. Exhale, airplane arms. Inhale, open triangle legs. Exhale, trikonasana. Long, even breath in. Long, even breath out. Good, make sure that everything is grounded, running that energy again up into the pelvis. Pelvis is nice and stable. Pulling up of the Mula Bandha, Uddiyana Bandha. Glutes are firm, so everything's moving in and up the torso and then extend through the arms. Half bind, whole bind. Maybe you want to extend the arm long. Good. Watch this front knee that it's not locked out. <sighs> this feels good. Two more breaths. One more beautiful breath. Good. Let's get a bend in the knee. Circle the arm around. Finding warrior two. Shoulders released from the ears. Knee tracks out towards the pinky toe. Perfect, little shoulder shrug, reaching out through the fingertips. Take an inhale. Exhale, just pause. Inhale, reverse your warrior. And then exhale, find extended spine angle. Again, staying here, half bind, whole bind, whatever feels best in your practice. Good. 
Three more breaths. Two more breaths. And one more. Maybe inch the back foot in a little bit. We're slowly going to square our hips back off. So my forearm's just going to come down into my thighs. We're moving into revolved extended side angle. So you could just reach the right arm out parallel to the mat. You could roll onto the ball of the back foot if that feels better. If you have it in your flexibility and in your practice, you can certainly bring the hand down to the mat, but think of belly coming through, shoulders, and then finishing with the gaze. Breathing in. Breathing out. One more breath. Good. If you're not there already, rolling onto the ball of the back foot. So we're in a low lunge, ground the hands. Release the front foot, inhale into three-legged down dog. And exhale, move through your vinyasa. Inhaling, upward facing dog. Exhale, downward facing dog. Take a minute, shake the legs out. <laughs> Just shake them out. Shake the muscles out, let them get soft. And then move back into your breath. Inhaling, left leg high. Exhale, knee comes to the nose. Carving out the belly, finding warrior one. Grounding those feet, running the energy of the earth up through the legs. Reaching hands up and overhead, close the eyes, just breathe. Feel the power in the posture. Left hip pulls back, right hip pulls forward. Reaching fingertips long. Nice long spine, creating space. Now, interlace those hands behind you, opening up the chest. Breathing into that beautiful open heart space, and then surrender down, humble warrior. <sighs> challenge and surrender, challenge and surrender. That which you can't control, release, release, release. Or, and, ask for that divine assistance when you need it. I do that every single day when I feel stuck in something that I can't fix myself. Just get out of your own way and call in the light. One more breath. Come to a halfway lift, stabilize. Launch off onto that leg. Start here, release the hands. If you're feeling stable, lift the leg more. You can take it all the way to parallel, it doesn't matter to me. Toes can be touching for more stability. Inhale, exhale, warrior three. Inhale, airplane arms. Exhale, warrior three. Two more, airplane arms. Warrior three, one more, airplane arms. Warrior three, pause and hold. Three, two, step it back into crescent lunge on one. Good. Let's slowly rise and then move back into your lunge. Slowly rise and move back into your lunge. Two more. Just feeling every muscle work and support you. Back into the lunge. Good, slowly open into your warrior two. Excuse me, into triangle legs. Into triangle legs. Good. Take an inhale and then just tick tock the arms. Make sure again you feel rooted down through the feet. You're running the life force, squeezing the glutes, pulling up. Right, so now I have a really strong, stable pelvis so the arms can move, the heart can open, and all is well. Those of you who take my class regularly, you know I always say just because you can doesn't mean you should, right? Just because you can touch the floor doesn't mean that's the best way to take the pose. Right now I'm firing all the muscles through the core to support this. If my hand were touching the mat, I'd be resting my weight on my hand. All right, one more breath. <sighs> Bend the knee, circle the arm around, open to warrior two. Stretch the fingertips out nice and wide. Shoulder shrug. Settle in again. Ground the feet. 
Run it into the center. Stack the spine. Arms spread out. Nice. Inhale, let's reverse our warrior. And exhale, bring it into extended side angle. Right now, I'm challenged plenty without taking any sort of bind. I'm able to hold this nice and stable. And I think when you look at postures, they reflect life so much. Yes, I could go bananas on my pose, but right now I'm feeling really good where I'm at without having to stretch my limits every single time. One more breath. Good, and you may wanna walk the back foot in now just a little bit. My hips are gonna square, forearms gonna rest on my thigh, my belly's facing down towards the mat, revolve extended side angle. Left hand can reach out. Staying as you are, remember you can go into the ball of back foot too, if that feels better. If you have it in your practice, you can ground the hand, belly comes through, shoulders and gaze. Find what works the best for you. Hold and breathe, three, and two. Ground the hands on one, roll onto the ball of the back foot. Inhale, left leg high, and exhale, move through your flow. Upward facing dog, downward facing dog, breathing in. And breathing out. Good. Rolling up onto ten toes, bend the knees, belly to thighs. Let's walk or jump top of the mat. Inhale, halfway. Exhale, fold. Inhale, chair pose. Good. Setting up for eagle here. Right in the heels. Arms open up, cactus arms. Left arm under right. You know what, let's actually just start with like a little hug of the body. Not moving into anything complicated, just grabbing opposite shoulder and then just squeeze down, let the chin follow. Feel that beautiful, gentle release through the head, neck, and shoulders. Let all the tension release, close the eyes. You're actually giving yourself a physical hug. Now give yourself an internal hug. I'm just noticing. We're muted now. Hold on. I'm just noticing some things going on with Zoom. Susie, you're muted. Thank you. Can you hear me now? Yes. Okay. Have you been able to hear me? Up until right then, yeah. Okay, good. <laughs> Thank you. All right, I don't know what happened, but now we're gonna take it into full eagle. So you can keep arms where they are, or you can bring forearms to touch. Wrapping left, arm, left leg over right. Kickstand the feet if you want, or double bind. Now, challenge again. If you wanna try closing your eyes again, just going very internal here. Think of this like towards the end of the day when you're holding everything together, right? You're exhausted. You've done everything you can. You've held everything together for the day. And now release, come into Shavasana. Ground the feet, fingertips. Reach down to the mat, close the eyes. Long, even breath in. Long, even breath out. Bring your heart rate down. Blood pressure down, settle in. Chair pose. Right over left. Give yourself that physical hug and that internal hug. Feeling stable, feeling calm. Slowly lifting the elbows up, interlacing forearms if that's in your practice. Bringing right knee over left, eagle pose. Curling everything in, pulling everything inward and then stacking the spine, lifting it up and releasing like it's going right out of the crown of the head. Dig 
dig into your breath here. Long, even breath in. Long, even breath out. One more. And release Tadasana. Close the eyes. Feel the energy. Feel the light. All is well. Ah. Good. Blinking the eyes open. All right. Let's put the weight back into the right foot and move into figure four. Now, there's options for figure four. If you want a little more fun now in the practice and you want to do an arm balance, feel free. If you'd rather bring the foot up towards the hip flexor and then come down into a yogi squat, feel free. Just find what feels the best on that release through the hip. We'll see how it goes with my hands in prayer. Whatever you do, don't watch me right now if you're looking for balance. Good. Couple more breaths. Ah. And then a slow release. Shake the legs out. Switch sides. Round the feet. Rounding left. Crossing over figure four. Take whatever option that serves you the most. All is well. Two more breaths. I just want to toe heel the feet, uh, mat distance, and then sink down into a nice yogi squat. We didn't get much inner thigh opening, and I think yogi squats are so incredibly important. Just release sitting bones down towards the earth, close the eyes, and again, just feel what's happening. What I've noticed with my yogi squats, I'm having increasingly tighter hips because I've been doing more and more computer work lately. Um, and when I open up my inner thighs, my hips release. The discomfort through my hips release. All right, friends, if you want to play a little bit more and you want to do an inversion rather than a yogi squat, feel free. Or if you want to take crow pose, take your time there as well. Once you land your pose, let's take five breaths in it. If this is too intense for you now, then come down into Baddha Konasana and see if that feels better. Beautiful. Inversions in your own time, make your way down. And from your yogi squat, we'll just step it out and flow again through your vinyasa. Upward facing dog. Downward facing dog. Long breath in. Even breath out. Shifting yourself. Forward, lowering all the way down to the mat, setting up for cobra pose, thumbs brushing the low ribs, tops of the feet pressing down into the earth. Let the quadriceps fire, let the glutes fire, work it into that mula bandha, uddiyana bandha, and on your inhale, lift head, neck, and shoulders. Cover the hands if you'd like. Good, and gentle lowering down. Good, and then inhale, lift, and exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift, and exhale, lower. Good, inhale, lift, and exhale, lower, just surrender. I'd actually like to take earth embrace. So bringing your arms into cactus arms, and 
and then just lifting the left knee to a 90 degree angle. And just spread the fingertips out evenly. And feel again the beautiful support of the earth moving right into heart space. Two more breaths just as you are. Good. Release the earth embrace on this side. Let's bring our arms down to our side. Salavasana, our locust pose. On the inhale, lifting head, neck, and shoulders like airplane arms, and then lifting the legs to match. Breathing in, pulling everything into the center, and then expressing out through the heart space. Inhale. Exhale, lower down, just tap the nose. Inhale, engage, lift and open. Good, exhale, lower down. Inhale, lift and open. Exhale, lower down one more time. Inhale, lift and open, pause, breathe. Four, three, two. Lower down, earth embrace. Find the cactus arms this time. Right leg lifts open to a 90 degree angle. Resting on the right cheek. Feel supported again. The beautiful Mama Earth just sending love up through your body. Allow yourself to let down. Allow yourself to move into that space of gratitude. Good, let's bring chin center. Leg comes down, pulling the hips back, finding child's pose, get a good stretch to the low lumbar. And then slowly sitting on the heels, come to stand on the knees. Ustrasana, camel pose. So now knees are rooting down to the earth. And then feel that lift and pulling in of the pelvic floor, firing up my core, shoulders lift up, open and back. And then hands come to my back pockets. Good, inhale, lifting, heart space open, chin just gently tips. Staying as you are, or if you'd like to reach for your heels, feel free. Just continue to open up through heart space. And now shine your gratitude. Let's gently release back down into child's pose. Go nice and internal. Let everything surrender. Let the belly just be soft. And if you want to sway yourself from side to side a little bit, just a little nurturing. You know, we rock babies and that comes so naturally. So just feel yourself like rocking and self-soothing. Such goodness. You can stay as you are again, or you can take rabbit pose if that's in your practice. So grabbing onto heels. You're starting on your forehead, and as you lift your hips high, you're coming out of the very top of your head, gazing right between the knees. It's a beautiful day. Ah, lower down, sitting bones. Connected to the heels, lungs deep stretch in child's pose. Good, then let's curl the toes under and find downward facing dog. Pedaling it out, shifting the weight in the gaze. Good, coming down onto knees, cross the legs and pulling the feet through. All right, from here, just a little boat pose, that's all, right? Whatever your boat pose looks like. 
For me, I usually have my heels just touching the mat so I can fully activate my core and talk and breathe and actually be joyful in, in a curl or boat pose. Close your eyes, just check in. What muscles do you feel firing when you close your eyes? Is it your hip flexors or your quadriceps or is it the core? Make those adjustments so you can isolate the core nicely. Beautiful, let's take three more breaths, long even breaths, inhale. Exhale, all is well. Inhale. Exhale. One more time, friends. Inhale. Exhale, lower down to half boat. And surrender all the way down to the mat. If you have your block, we're going to be moving into <laughs> um, bridge pose. I'm just kind of chuckling at how I said block. Block. <laughs> My daughter, Lily, would be making fun of me right now. <laughs> all right, anyway. So you found your way down to the mat. So do you feel like taking more of a restorative bridge? And if so, you can just stick the block or your rolled up blanket underneath the hips. If it's a block, this would be level one. This would be level two. And this would be level three. So just deciding what feels the best to you. If you're doing it without the block, ground the feet. Moving sitting bones as close as you can, or heels as close as you can to the sitting bones. Tip the tailbone away from the mat and slowly lift, 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 lift on the inhale, opening up, shimmying those shoulders underneath. Breathing into it, all is well. You are strong and capable. And you're alive. Good, if you are in full bridge pose and you want to release, feel free. If you're in restorative, just stay as you are. If you are in full bridge and you want to bring knees into the chest or you want to take Supta Baba Konasana or windshield wiper, do whatever feels good, get that release in the low back. All right, beauties. Second set, so either bridge or maybe you want to go into full wheel. And if you're doing that full wheel, no matter what you're doing, this is a nice, beautiful heart opener, so just express through your heart, right? Express gratitude for something, anything, many things. And just enjoy where you're at. And then releasing down when you feel ready. Same thing, doing circles with the knees, Supta Baddha Konasana, or windshield wiper. All right, let's move into our hip openers right now. Um, if you prefer to take figure four, stay just as you are and just cross one leg over the other. Because you're at home, you can turn around and you can actually put um, one foot on the wall and make more ease for yourself. If you have another hip opener that you prefer, maybe you want to take half pigeon, maybe you want to take a seated, cross-legged seat, do whatever feels right to you. Um, I always tell you, change your hip openers around, okay? Because you have five components to the hips and you want to hit every single muscle group that supports the hips. So I actually haven't done half pigeon in a while, I've been doing more seated ones. So find your groove right now and then breathe in and just allow yourself again, surrender into it. Let your breath guide you. One thing that I wanted to mention to all our healthcare workers and our teachers and you know our police force, EMTs, um, you're being put in a really sacred position right now, a really sacred space 
of ushering people through very challenging times in their life. It's like a ministry. Um, and when you're feeling overwhelmed by it, and parents too, you know, you're trying to work and hold school for your kids and on and on and on. Um, I really see the earth right now being in kind of a sacred bubble. And we've all been put on pause in different ways. And we've all been given responsibilities that maybe we weren't wanting. I just want you to um, pause for a minute while you're in this beautiful hip opener and um, honor the beautiful job that you're doing. Honor the people that you've supported. And as I said before, if you're in a place of overwhelm, call in that divine help, that divine guidance. Let's take about four more breaths on this side. King pigeon, if it's in your practice and you want to come up early. In your own time, Coming out of your hip opener, if you're seated, extend legs long, take a nice forward fold. If you're on your back, just extend feet to the sky. And if you're in half pigeon, finding down dog. And slowly moving on to the other side. When you're ready. Feeling into it, noticing how this side feels versus the other side. We're not forcing anything. We're just allowing and supporting with our props. Let's take about four or five more breaths on this side. King Pigeon, if that's in your practice.
in your own time, and then let's take a final downward facing dog. Long, even breath in. Deep, even breath out. Coming down onto your knees, cross your legs, pull your feet through. Extending them long in front of you. If you've already taken a couple forward folds because you were doing seated, then again, take a Baddha Konasana or move the legs out to more of a diamond shape. Otherwise, Paschimottanasana. Maybe put a bolster under the knees. Lifting up on sitting bones, nice and tall. Inhale and exhale as you fold. Gentle release. Ground the hands, lift the hips nice and high, reverse your plank or your table. And then sitting bones go down to the mat, lower all the way down, bringing knees into the chest. Deep breath in, deep breath out. Feet to the sky, you can put the bolster or block again under the low lumbar sacrum area, or you can move into full plow pose and shoulder stand. If you're a shoulder stand person, remember, weight is on the shoulders and the triceps, not on the back of the neck. Lifting feet high to the sky. Good. Breathe in and breathe out. Good. A couple more breaths. And then gentle release. Maybe knees to ears, kind of padasana. Knees to the chest. And then slowly roll yourself all the way up. I mean, happy baby. What a great name for a pose. Especially for adults to be taking a posture like this. Knees come back into the chest. Moving into supine twist from here. So either holding on to the right knee, letting the left knee go long, or both knees are going to go over to your left side. Take an inhale and then exhale. Find your twist. Breathe in. And breathe out. All is well. Good, two more breaths. And guide your knees back into the center. Give them a good squeeze, little compressions on the belly. So good for that intestinal tract. Switch sides, either both knees or the right knee crosses over the body and goes, or excuse me, left knee goes to the right side. Supine twist. Breathing in. Breathing out. Again, remember that breath, prana, is divine light. Every single breath you take, you are rejuvenating your body. You are giving it the opportunity to repair. Bringing you back to the center. Both knees into the chest. Wrapping forearms around the shins. Bring the forehead up to the knees. Inhale, pressing shins into forearms. And exhale, opening up for your final resting pose, Shavasana. And while we're in Shavasana, again, I would like to do this circle of light. Um, Everyone just sending love into the center, and you can put your people, whoever you are, caring for, um, just sending love to those people. 
and make sure that you place yourself in the center as well. So it's just feelings and thoughts of love moving out through heart center to those of us we care about. Feel free to stay as long as you'd like in your Shavasana because you're in your own beautiful home. If you are ready to come out, before you move, give gratitude for your body and the miracle that it is. Give gratitude for all the goodness that you have offered to others. and give gratitude for yourself. Knowing on your side, like you just hit the reset button. And all is well, let's come to a comfortable cross-legged seat. Hands are in prayer position to your heart center. Guiding the love and light from your heart center to your third eye center. May you have peace in your beautiful thoughts. Prayer hands to your lips. May you have peace in your beautiful words. Hands back to your heart. Peace in your beautiful heart and in your actions. Bowing forward to seal in our practice. Namaste, beauties. Thank you so much for joining me. And remember that phrase, a minister and angel, my sister shall be. And this means brother as well. But um, go out to love and to serve. And then also remember to accept that love and grace right back at yourself. Happy Thanksgiving, everyone. Thank you.